Have you read the news? Being a rideshare driver really sucks. If you look on the internet, you watch TV news, everyone's talking about how these drivers are sleeping in their cars, they're making less than minimum wage, AB5 passed, but no one thinks Uber and Lyft are gonna do anything about it. So the question is, why are drivers still driving? That's what I'm gonna answer in this video. And stick around, because at the end of the video, I'm gonna share with you how much my pay has dropped as a percentage uh, from when I first started to now, and I'm still driving. Hey everybody, it's Jay Crater with The Rideshare Guy, and today we're gonna to talk about why do drivers stick around? Well, the fact of the matter is two thirds of the drivers don't stick around after six months. So two out of every three drivers who start driving are gone, right? But there's still a bunch of us that are out there that have been driving for a long time. And, you know, rates have been cut, um, destination filters have been taken away. Uh, we used to get paid a percentage of the, of the passenger's fare. Now we're paid a minute per minute and per mile. And there's all kinds of games being played so that we can be get, get paid less, right? So why do we keep driving? First of all, number one, habits are hard to break. So we are creatures of comfort and better the devil you know. Have you heard that expression? So I know that if I go out, I can work five hours and make $125. I know I, I can do that, right? It's easy to do. And for a lot of us, that's, that's a good reason to keep driving because we know it, it's reliable, we can count on it, habits are hard to break. Number two reason we keep driving, the stimulation of the passengers, right? We can get these amazing people in our car and have these great conversations. Every day, I just went out and drove this morning, I had 10 passengers, I had this really cool guy, we had this nice talk, had another person, we talked about you know taking care of your parents as they get older, um, I took a woman to the airport. She's going to Las Vegas for her 29th birthday with her girlfriends. You know, you have these nice chats and you learn stuff. So it's stimulating because you learn new things. Sometimes you have a heart to heart connection that makes you feel good. Uh, so the sense of connection that you can have every single day that you go out, that's another reason why we still drive. Number three reason we keep driving, the stimulation of the open road, right? So I drove in San Francisco for three, almost four years. It's a beautiful city. Uh, I'm showing you now this beautiful sunset that I captured uh, one morning recently. Now I'm in Sacramento. Here's another image from, of the Capitol with the sun rising. We see great stuff. There's something about being behind the wheel, you know, being behind the wheel and driving. It's stimulating. You get to go fast, you get to go slow. You can open the window, you can listen to music. It's just a kind of a wonderful thing that we get to do. And we can pick up a passenger and make some money. Number four, we have an irrational hope that things are gonna get better. I certainly do. You know, things have been going like this, like this, like this. I'm gonna, at the end of the video, show you how far, how far we've fallen. But we have this hope, AB5 just passed. That could mean something, right? That could give us some leverage. That could get us increased uh, 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 fares. It could increase the fares. It could increase how much we get paid out of those fares. Uh, we could get health care. A lot of things could happen. So we have this hope that things are gonna get better. So if we stick in there, you know, stick with it, uh, it, it might turn out to be better than it is right now. Number five, easy work, quick pay. So like I said before, it's easy to just go out and drive for a little bit, make some money, and then with, uh, with express pay, uh, instant deposit, you can put the money in your bank account, go take it out of your ATM machine, go to your bank and take it out, and you got money like that. What I'm showing Final you. is freedom and flexibility. Freedom and flexibility. No matter what you say, you can go drive whenever you want. Now Uber has these bonuses and these consecutive trip things that are you know trying to lure you into certain times, but you can drive whenever you want. And if you want to stop driving and head off for a month and go to Thailand, which I recently did, great, you can do that too. That's very attractive. But what I want to show you now is how far we've fallen. So there is freedom and there is flexibility, but we also in many ways don't have a lot of freedom and flexibility because Uber and, and Lyft control our pay. So what you see here in this spreadsheet is a typical 50 hour week. And this compares last uh, 
uh, this year to 2016 when I started. So I could easily make $2,200 a week when I, when I started. And that would be 50 hours, I'd make $30 an hour, $1,500. I could reasonably expect about 200 in prime time or surge, $500 bonus, boom, 2,200. Now, due to uh, the rate cuts, I can only make 1,350, not 1,500. Uh, due to the difference in uh, surge and prime time, now it's called uh, personal power zones, about half of that. The bonus, rather than being 500, is now 300, and that's 1750. That is 450 less per week. That's an 80 percent, 80 percent of what I was making before. It's a 20 percent cut. But even with that, that's still not bad. I can still work 50 hours and make 1750, and have the freedom and flexibility. So, what are the key takeaways here? Driving used to be better. I mean, I started four years ago. If I started six years ago and did a comparison like that, it would be even worse. So we experience death by a thousand cuts. Every little thing pulls a little bit of money out of our pocket as drivers. However, the key takeaway is there's still some value here. There's still the freedom, the flexibility, the stimulation of the open road, the stimulation of our passengers, the ability to cash out quickly. These are all valuable things and it gives you the opportunity to pursue your plan B. So you can get to work on doing something else. For example, for me, I used to be full-time, now I'm part-time. Now I'm writing articles, I'm making videos, I'm doing a coaching program, I'm making a podcast. So, you know, you can taper off the driving and, and, and uh, what's the feather in? You can feather in uh, other things. And within a few months here, I will, I'll be doing very little driving, probably one or two days a week, and just doing all this other stuff. So. There's some, some uh, motivation. I hope to be a catalyst here to have you realize that there's other things you can be doing besides the driving. I understand how you love the driving, but you gotta start looking towards the future and planning your exit plan, your plan B, your exit plan. Hey everybody, it's Jay Crater with the Rideshare Guy. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, give it a like. Go ahead and subscribe. Join us here. We bring out great content uh, three to four times a week, these great videos to show you how to make more money in less time. Y'all go out and have a great day. Be safe out there.